everybody, I'm Kelly Hydebreeder and this is Lenaway. Students and teachers are making big strides across the county and they're doing some really great things. We're taking our cameras around the district and here at the Tech Center to see what our kids are learning. Let's take you to Britton Deerfield Elementary School where they are learning to stretch their classroom curriculum and learning some real life lessons. <laughs> We always have a theme for reading month. We've done cowboy themes and space themes and all kinds of themes and we try to have fun things for them to do throughout the month. Our reading theme for March is reading is groovy. So we decided to make a peace sign to um, go along with our reading theme and we made it by making a colorful coffee filter. Um, they colored it with a marker and then the water of course made the marker spread and then they're going to be putting a peace sign over top of that. Then they're going to be going on construction paper and underneath it they are drawing a picture of one of their favorite books and then they're all going to be going out in the hallway to um, have some nice displays of their favorite books for reading month. We are ending our, we always try to have a culminating activity and so at the end of the month we are actually having the hands-on museum from Ann Arbor come down and they're going to do a science night for the kids and that should be tons of fun with more science-like activities like our spreading water on the coffee filters so that's another fun thing we have planned for them to do as well. Well, that looks like a lot of fun. Next, we'll go to Clinton. The students are also sharing their knowledge when it comes to chemistry in the classroom. Let's check it out. For today, we are trying to get the middle schoolers interested in chemistry before they get to high school. The more we try and get them involved, the better they seem to want to know. And so if we let one person kind of take off, then they're the only one learning. So we're trying to get them all involved and then you can kind of see them be a little more comfortable in asking questions and talking. The high schoolers here are from Clinton High School are showing us some science experiments because we have a big science fair coming up soon. I think that they're a great role model and they're doing a fabulous job of teaching us. For them, I want them to be able to realize that chemistry is pretty cool and that they should take it in high school and just strive to be the best that they can. It's like the teacher's dream of watching them take what you showed them and then being able to, you know, actually grow up and be able to use those same skills. And then, you know, kids are natural teachers anyways. They want to teach each other. And they, as high schoolers, have already, like you just said, they've gone through these halls. They went, they were in this lab. And so for now, for them to be so self-possessed and so poised at being able to kind of, you know, talk a younger kid through the lesson was really neat. And it's, it's also good for them to get a perspective from somebody like up here as well. So they can, maybe they'll be able to communicate it in a different way than what we've learned in class. And it might, that light bulb might come on for that middle school student. I think we might be encouraging some future teachers there. When we come back, we're going to talk to the Better Business Bureau to check out some scams that might have a pretty familiar name. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, or even what you wear. You just need to be there. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. You might be an old pro using the computer, and if you are, the name brand Microsoft is pretty familiar. But sometimes, scammers use those trusted names to draw us in. Dick Epstein from the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau has ways to spot a scam and ways to spot a trusted site. Well, Microsoft scams 
are a, a very large problem for Lenawee County and for all of the United States. People get a phone call uh, out of the blue. Just, just the phone rings and it's a technician. And he calls you up and he says, this is, I'm calling from Microsoft. We've been monitoring your computer. We noticed that it's running very slow and we have the ability to get in there. And it, it, the reason it's running slow is it's got a virus. It's infected and we can get in there and clean it out for you as a service. Uh, sometimes they'll first say they're Microsoft and then later they'll, they'll say, oh no, we're just tech support and they'll have a different name for their company. But these people are not legitimate. They are not really Microsoft or whatever Apple or HP or whatever they say they are. They are con artists who are calling from all over the world. We've had calls like this from the Philippines, from Malaysia, from uh, India, and they claim to be monitoring your computer, which is a lie. They're just calling out of the blue. Uh, you get this call and let's face it, everybody's computer runs slow. Uh, we're all fighting with our computers every day. So when you get this call, you say, yes, you're right. I, it is running slow. Help me here. Um, what they want to do is they want to get into your computer and they will walk you through the steps. They'll go to this website, click on this, enter this, log, and, and eventually uh, you're sitting there and you're watching your mouse, uh, the, the cursor going around because he's now in your computer. What's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. Uh, you don't know what he's doing. And there are several things he could be doing, that none of which are good. First, uh, most typically they're installing some kind of malware, some kind of virus or worm or trojan that they can put in your computer uh, that can um, monitor your usage of the computer, let him know your keystrokes, let him know your passwords. He can extract all kinds of information from your computer. The point is, Microsoft, the legitimate computer companies, never do this. They do not monitor your computer. I, I talked to a consumer a few days ago. They called her up and they said, we've been monitoring your computer. It, we've been getting signals from your computer that indicate that it's got a virus. And it's right now, it's signaling us. We're seeing it on our screen. And this person said, wait a minute. She says, my computer's shut down. My computer is disassembled because we're remodeling the house and it's, it's in pieces. Oh no, he says, I'm monitoring it right now and I can see, uh, yeah, it, it is working, it is still sending out the signals. She hung up on him because he was obviously a crook. The most important thing is, don't let them in. Check with us first. Say, t tell them, look, I don't know who you are. Give me your name, give me your address, give me your phone number, I'll call you back. And more than likely, he'll hang up on you. So don't do that. But if you have any questions, give us a call at BBB. If you want to contact the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau, just go to their website. It's bbb.org or give them a call 419-720-7188. When we come back, we'll take a tour of our automotive collision repair and refinishing class. And these kids are amazing. Go for a mouthful. Go for the fun. Oh, go for go kids. Go for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes, and it's gopher, gopher, gopher cakes. Open wide, stuff your face, there's always room for more gopher cakes. Oh. Empty the box, they're reload, eat those gopher cakes till you explode. Exercised lately. Till you explode. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Many of the students come to the LASD Tech Center for classes that they can really get their hands on. And some of our kids really get busy and they are learning how to get creative and learning some tricks from the professionals that refinish your car. And these are some pretty awesome tricks. Well, today we're fortunate to have Tom Banks, who's a professional airbrush artist, 
from Ohio Technical College located in Cleveland that contact us and want to come do a demonstration for us. To see somebody that come that can walk in here and they're doing it for a living and they're professional and, and, and this is how they pay their bills, um, it really hits home. You don't have to be a super great artist to be able to do this. I can't draw a stick figure, but I can do some wild custom graphics. Um, and, and that's what they're learning today. We're watching uh, this guy from Cleveland Tech. He's teaching us how to airbrush all the stencils. He's teaching how to do fires and how to recolor things off flames. I, I think he's great. He's, he has runs his own business and everything. That's kind of what I always wanted to do. I've never done airbrush. I've always wanted to. We're, we're actually going to learn it in about a week or so. Basically what I did is I came in and I just shared a little bit about what goes into doing this type of work with the students here at the school because everything beyond the operation the brush is just simply tracing, coloring, special effects, dirty tricks, and a whole lot of cheating. And, and that's what I came in and I showed these guys today is how you don't have to be able to draw to do this type of work. You could use a projector, you could work with a stencil. I always like custom paint. I don't have an artistic bone in my body. Never in a million years ever thought I could ever get into something like this. But I, I remember growing up going to the car shows and the bike shows and things like that and looking at all the cool paint jobs. I was a tech kid. You know, I went to vocational school. I've been successful in this business is because I learned the process and learned the skill. And I think a lot of the, the students can relate to that. And they can see someone who's not all that different from them that learn how to do this. And, you know, for some of them, that might be all the difference that they need to say, you know what, maybe they want to jump in with something like this and learn to pursue this. I mean, this is an experience that, you know, most people don't ever get to have is someone like me come in and blow away all the smoke and mirrors and show them what really goes into this. It gives you a little bit informa more information about how to actually do things like this. I think it's really fun. I would like to do it as a profession. I always wanted to paint like this. Oh, this class is great. I loved it. I'm so glad I get to learn how to paint and how to fix all cars like that because all I always wanted to do, I always wanted to learn how to do like the cool, you know, when people see like when you go down to Florida to see all the tripped out rides, like people like crack, crack, and pop on there. I always want to do those murals like that inside the cars. And for them to see that happen and for them to see it step by step along the way and have it explained to them, also now a thing it registers in their minds as something that they understand. And as soon as you understand something, at least even conceptually, now you have confidence that yes, I think I could learn to do this. And that's the purpose of me coming here and doing these types of presentations. Isn't that a great experience for these students? Now let's check in with our video and audio production class. They have to plan a food drive as part of a national competition. Now let's see how they did it. <laughs> We had a food drive that we have every year. Um, video and audio production goes around to each classroom, picks up water, cans, um, ramen packets, just anything that won't it spoil quickly. We go around every classroom, we tell them that um, the one class with the most points gets a pizza party. So we go to each classroom, we gather everything, and it all is for our Skills USA competition. And over the course of the weeks, you can see the food start to pile up, and you can see the sculpture start to form. And then today, as we all load it on the van, you can see all the smile on the faces of the uh, uh, children in here, and just see the collaborative effort. And it's just a really fun process of just transporting the food, and then just um, seeing it pile up in the van, and then seeing the face uh, of the lady who came in that we gave it to, and just see how um, fortunate that we are too be able to do this for her and it's just a it's a really great feeling all across the board. We take care of 25 to 30 families every month and we're a supplemental food pantry so it's the second Thursday of each month we give out food and there is hygiene a bag of hygiene stuff there's three kinds of meat plus a, a tote tub full of food. When I started out we had two little shelves now we have a room full of food for them. And uh, it, it's just amazing to be able to help people. And we're just at the tip of the iceberg. And people say, why do you do it? I said, because I get the reward of feeding people who would go without. I'm coming to look back at my high school experience, and then I see that uh, we have food sculptures like this, and you can see a little uh, newspaper clip it, um, and see your young self, and see what you did, and say, oh yeah, I remember when I was 
18 years old and I helped out the Clinton Community Food Drive. And I think it's just small things like that that kind of stick with you for a long time, rather than a you know, 4.0 in high school or uh, something on the ACT. So it's more of uh, you know the emotional things that kind of you connect with. Ooh, thank you, thank you. This is a really fun group of kids. When we come back, we're going to grab the hammer and nails. It's time to see what the Building Trades kids are up to. Hi, I'm Mike Rowe. 14 years ago, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Well, this year, she celebrated her 50th wedding anniversary. Is that why you've taken off your jeans? No, I've taken off my jeans to prove the link between jeans and the fight against breast cancer. Well, that's interesting. Do I have to take off my jeans? No, nobody has to take off their jeans, Mom. But everybody has to go to DenimDay.com right now. I'll explain everything. Dress code optional. Apparently. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Learn more at DenimDay.com. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I truly love walking the halls here at the Lenawee County Intermediate School District. These kids are always busy doing something. And when the building trades kids walk in the door, their first thing they do is they put on their tool belt. Isn't that great? Well, they are building some special houses for pygmy goats. Hi, my name is Lisa Salceda, and I'm in building trades with Justin Bowers. Hi, Justin, how are you today? I'm fine, how are you? Fine. What are the materials that you guys used in this project? Uh, we use lumber 2x4 and then we have OSB for the flooring and then we have steel sheeting. The uh, project that the students are working on right now is for, uh, for a lady that has a couple of pygmy goats and she wants a little house for them. So we're working on uh, putting one together. And how do you feel like this class and the LSE Tech Center helps students in their future careers or just daily tasks every day? Well, I think all the students have the hope and desire sometimes to own their own house, so whether they go into this as a career or just utilize it for the day that they come to buy their own house, um, they can go into college, they can go into it through an apprenticeship, uh, different there's various ways that they can utilize what they've learned in here. Since you're coming to the Tech Center, how do you feel that this class is getting you ready for your future? For my future, I feel like it's going to help me with my own home repairs and have a little bit of knowledge for things that I may or may not want to do in the future. Each student walks out of the class with the basics on construction, and even if they don't go into the building trades, they will know how to do a few things around their own home, and we all know how valuable that is. Well, that's our show. Thanks for sharing time with us. If you see something amazing going on right here in Lenaway, we want to know about it. Just email us at lasdtv at lasd.us. I'm your host, Kelly Hyde-Brader. Make it a great day, Lenaway. <laughs>